Uh, I'd like to thank the Grace of Heaven and the Virtual Masters and predecessors that I have the opportunity to um, present this class on the translation of the um, Dharma class sutra, sutras uh, in New York. Um, as Ty, Lecture Time mentioned, unfortunately, <laughs> I looked at my thumb drive today, my memory stick today, and I found out that I didn't copy the file that I needed to copy, that was, you know, the translated copy of this uh, sutra uh, to my laptop. So therefore, I am without a translation file. So we're going to try to uh, do as much translation as we can. Um, there are certain, certain translations that are more straightforward, so it's easy. It's much easier to present that. But the the part, the main part, of the translation, unfortunately, <laughs> um, it's not that straightforward. So therefore, I hope that today uh, we will be able to do at least discuss it. Um, um, because unfortunately, I don't have my translation file with me. Okay, but to begin all, uh, to begin uh, the presentation off, uh, what you're looking at on the um, screen here is the, um, the second day of the New York Dharma class, and that was when Holy Teacher came, and basically he <coughs> he composed of a, uh, composed a sutra, okay, but part of it is his, and the other part uh, he said it was essentially God's instructions, okay, and uh, this is the and this part of the God's mm -hmm. instructions um, as far as I understand it now is the third part is part three of uh, God's instructions uh, parts one and two were um, performed by again composed by uh, holy teacher uh, during Dharma classes in Taiwan and then later on part four and four Five and six is that it? Four, four, five, six. Yes. Was it four, five, six? Yes. Okay. Okay. Four, six. Okay. Four was in um, Ohio Dharma class. Five was in uh, Iowa Dharma class, and six was in the uh, California Dharma class. Okay. So this is part three. Okay. So um, lecture Thai had already done part four last week <laughs> because when I was not ready yet to to, uh, to do the translation. I mean to to do the presentation on part three, okay, <clears throat> and again, I'm st still not ready because I didn't bring my file. Okay, so anyway, so we will at least uh, try to do as much as we can today. Okay, so to begin um, the sutra compositions, uh, Holy Teacher came <clears throat> and he composed this abstract. Uh, the, 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 as you all are aware, as mentioned before, in, in the two weeks ago, my first class, I mentioned that when Buddhists come, they always pre present an abstract first, compose an abstract first, announce themselves uh, and the proprieties, and then uh, complete the rest of the composition. And then um, in between it, I guess you could say, in between the composition that they're composing, uh, they would have conversation aspects of the, uh, of the, uh, I guess you could say, of the Dharma, of their visitation <laughs> okay and uh, the in the composition aspects they will then some uh, also uh, sometimes explain a little bit about their own composition okay so in this abstract here he's basically saying cherish this pre okay cherish this precious time all right uh, I would yeah cherish the time the, the preciousness of the time that we have okay cherish it and then because we can uh, create a new future or brand new future okay um, so here he's talking about the fact that yeah time is pre you know time is precious it waits for no person okay and uh, what is gone is gone and uh, so all you have is now um, but however uh, with this if you can if you know how to cherish this moment or if you make the most of your time you will be able to create a new future for yourself because even though there is fate and destiny uh, it is not written in stone it's something that we can change okay uh, we are affected by or, or influenced by our destiny or fate and destiny which is our past karma okay or result of our past karma let's put it that way but even though we are influenced by that we can never nevertheless uh, I guess you could say 
transform it maybe or divert it divert the course that we were supposed to take okay so that is what uh, the teach, uh, Holy Spirit uh, talks about in the first line second line he's saying cherish the opportunity to cultivate Tao okay forge a foundation to achieve Buddhahood or enlightenment okay so here he's talking about the fact that you know you you somehow because of your karma in the past have the opportunity to meet someone who will introduce you to the Tao and that you had the opportunity you then had the opportunity to what receive the Tao if you will we call it that we call it receiving or seek the Tao and then now you have the opportunity to what cultivate the Tao okay so this is not something that is easy to come by okay because if you look at the world today even now okay there are are there are karmic influences that makes it if you will so for some people difficult to cultivate or even cultivate at all okay if you're a person who were let's for this for the sake of argument take today if you're a person who was living in <laughs> Syria today okay where there's a civil war going on blah 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 are you really worried about cultivating or are you worried about your own life being alive <laughs> you're more worried about staying alive okay so in other words our own karma if you will unfortunately and I have to admit I was a little bit shocked by it well, not shocked but I was a little bit well surprised by it the fact that when the teacher said that all our present conditions and future conditions okay is all nothing but the result of our own karmas okay now it just it it, it literally takes away from my perspective the idea of coincidence or chance okay all right and that really surprised me a little bit okay because I had thought that there was some aspects of chance or uh, uh, coincidence that comes into play in our lives okay okay but unfortunately from what the Holy Teacher said I got the understanding that no everything is dictated by our karma Okay, now that's it was hard, a little bit hard for me to swallow at first but I got over that <laughs> I eventually accepted it but still it's something that I really you know thought wow I need really didn't really think about this okay so but anyway the idea is that we have the opportunity to cultivate the Tao because not all, not every one of us has this karmic affinity to be able to be at this stage okay or at this condition in this condition to be able to cultivate the Tao and through cultivating of the Tao you can create a foundation or establish the foundation if you will to be able to achieve enlightenment or become a Buddha okay because without cultivation you can't achieve that okay and the reason why is well I shouldn't say that I should say without a good foundation or without a foundation one cannot become enlightened okay now what do I mean by that foundation the foundation is the fact that because if we look at our own human selves we do have what very commonly in the Tao community we talk about in Chinese is Mao Bing Pi Chi which is basically uh, bad habits and uh, temperament I guess temperament is the best way to describe it okay so therefore and, be, and, be, and it's that bad habits or temperament is part of it I guess you could say um, is influenced by our previous karmic past and part of it it's based on our own human development in this world in this present in this present life in this present life okay from our from being a babe born as a baby to an adult now we have accumulated or we have been influenced by our environment and therefore those influences then affect our own temperament and habits okay but how come we also have affinity to or a a uh, a likelihood of having certain other habits or temperaments that then is affected by our karmic past okay our previous lives the the accumulated <laughs> things that we have not let go of in our previous lives and therefore it, it tends it stays with us if you will that influences us are in our future okay so here we want to forge a foundation because it is the foundation that's really um, that's really important because I mentioned that 
Buddha says that what? You can achieve enlightenment in an instant or you can achieve enlightenment in a thousand lifetimes. Okay? That's a common Buddhist phrase, you know, when you talk about oh, when will I become enlightened? <laughs> okay, for example. All right. So so each one of us have different if if everything is left alone, okay, in other words, allowed to run its natural course, let's put it that way. Each one of us has a certain amount of um, time, if you will, that if we work hard at cultivation and all that stuff, we will become enlightened. The reason why I can say that is because Buddha, when he was alive, he was talking to some of his disciples. And he did say to some of his disciples that, yes, in the future you will become enlightened. So he, in a way, predicted, you could say he predicted the future, I guess you want to call it, for those disciples, okay? Because the idea is, here is the fact that he says, if you can continue your striving for enlightenment, we'll call it that, okay, then yes, one day you will achieve that. And he guarantees that, so to speak, by predicting the fact that they will. <laughs> okay, so, so it just means that, you know, in their many future lives, okay, doesn't matter, don't, we don't know how many, that each one of them, his disciples that he was talking to, eventually will become enlightened or become like the Buddha himself if you will, okay, enlightened, okay, we just say enlightened, I'll just call it enlightenment, okay, now it, it's not necessarily the same time, but each of them will have their own times, so each of us sort of like has a time period in which that if you continue your cultivation using the nat natural course of events, like we're right now cultivating, you will eventually reach that point where you'll become enlightened, okay, now when you reach that point varies from individual to individual. That's affected by previous karma and the efforts they put in into building the foundation to reach that enlightenment. So that's why this foundation is very important. That's why he the Holy Teacher talks about the fact that you need to establish or build a foundation, construct a foundation to reach that. Okay. Now, this sort of like answers the question of sometimes we may ask, like, well, why is it that some like, you know, when we have, um, and you hear stories of this, that in the Tao community you have uh, young kids, they are born into a Tao family, you know, they, they're, they're very, very uh, devoted, blah, 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 sincere and whatever, and then, well, a tra we call it a tragedy, <laughs> tragedy happens, the kid dies or the small kid, you know, children die, and people, would, in human terms, we say, wow, that's tragic, because your family has lost a young member of the family, okay, whether it's a baby, a newborn baby still, or you know, a very young person. So yes, from the perspective of the human, from the human perspective, yeah, it's a tragedy because it's a loss. It's a loss, okay, of a family member. But yet, from the standpoint of the child or the individual that passed away, it was just his time, his time. Okay. Now, what happened? And the reason why we can say that is because because of the to make people understand that it's really not a tragedy, <laughs> if you will, is we, as you know, we can do um, communications with the deceased, <laughs> right? We call it jie yuan, okay, it means to make a connection. I guess you could say, yeah, the direct translation is make a connection, right? Make a connection, and it's of those deceased or those who have passed away. And some of them, when they come, even their kids, I remember, like for example, our old predecessor, he had a young grandson, is it? I think it was grandson, okay, I'm not quite sure if it's grandson or, yeah, I think it's grandson, right? Only like several years, less than 10 years old. And you would think that, oh, as a predecessor, our grand predecessor, you know, it should be, you know, like very <laughs> normal, but his grandson passed away. At a very young age, and people thought, "How could that happen? You know, how could that happen?" We think, and then the grandparents, and then so therefore, as a way to help people understand, they had this connection, or this, you know, communication, if you will, with the deceased child. And the child came and says, "You know, oh, my purpose here, coming here, was only to what receive that, that what, that that transmission." That was his own. Per that was his whole purpose in life, nothing more. The reason why he was, why th that was the case, is because in a way he already has a foundation of cultivation in previous lives already, many many previous lives. 
And he had already built up that foundation to the point where in this life, it was time he could re become enlightened, if you will, or become like a Buddha. And so therefore, all he was waiting for was that transmission. And of course, being uh, born in a Tao family, what happens? You know, the baby gets received, blessed, get the blessing, right? The, the receiving of the Tao. So that was all he needed. And this not, did not occur just in the grand predecessor's family himself, but there are other families that I, stories I've heard of, I've heard of from Taiwan, that that is also the case. Okay, so the idea is that each of us has this period of time, okay? How long? Like Buddha says, it could take a thousand lifetimes. By saying a thousand lifetimes means multiple lifetimes, okay? It could be more than a thousand, it could be less than a thousand, it doesn't matter. That's just a number. But the point is that if you can still pursue this path, because each time, once you're, you're cultivating, you do establish a bit of your, you add a little bit to your foundation, if you will. Okay, you add a little bit each time. Okay, now, the good news is that your foundation, unfortunately, does not get torn down if you don't cultivate. But the idea is that it's always there. Okay, however, how soon you build the foundation up enough to achieve enlightenment, that's depending on your, depends on your effort in each lifetime. Okay, so that's why he talks about this foundation here. <clears throat> Then the third line, he talks about cherish the, this limited life, build a more satisfactory, I would say more meaningful, meaningful life, okay. Um, the limited life, cherish this limited life, okay. We all know we have lifespans. Our lifespans vary. Uh, in fact, during the Dharma class, Holy Teacher talks about the fact that oh, senior transmitter is now 94, you know, he has, and he still has many years to go according to Holy teacher, right? I think he says something like that. Okay, and then you know, of course, senior transmitter saying, "Well, how many more years?" You know, <laughs> you know I want to know. You know, give me some number. You know, give me something. You know, give me something that I don't know. Okay, and the holy teacher says, "That's just it." You know, there's some more years, whether it's long or short. Okay, that can change, but to give you just a number, or to to say, "Oh, yeah, ten more years, five more," that's meaningless because it's just a number. It in itself is just a number. More importantly is the fact that you understand that you do have a certain time, amount of time. We do have a certain amount of time, okay? And given that you only, uh, you know now that you only have a certain amount of time, depending on where you are now to who knows when, how can you make the most use of it? And that is why he talks about building more meaningful or satisfactory life, to make it, this life meaningful. Okay, because let's face it, if you look at the world today, there are people who just live their lives and it's time to go, let's go. And what? You may be remembered for a few generations by your own family, but then after that, okay, life goes on and you're no longer remembered or anything like that, okay? Um, it's like the movie Coco. Have you seen the cartoon Coco? Is it Coco? No, no, it's about Mexican, uh, yeah, Latin American, Latin American uh, kid, you know, and they, they have pictures of their deceased and all that. And so long as you have a picture, you remember them, right? You should have a picture of them. But if you no longer have a picture of them, what? What does that mean? Forgotten. You're forgotten. You, you, you're forgotten, you know, from their standpoint. So it's very much like saying, uh, <laughs> have you ever, everybody seen Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But then there's an episode. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 yeah, you get the idea. I see a lot of shows, but I get ideas from those shows. You know, sometimes they're meaningful too. Yeah. Um, the idea is the fact that uh, he's uh, in Star Trek. The episode was just one of the uh, members of the, the ship was saying that, okay, or uh, he, they they visited a civilization that had passed away. But the important thing was that they say. So long you remember us, that means that we have lived. Our life is meaningful because you remember them. Okay, but once you've forgotten them, who cares? It's like a tree falling in the forest. You know, do you hear a tree falling in the forest? Not necessarily, but so you don't care really. It's like you don't care. So the idea here is to say that understand the fact that regardless of what age you are now, understand that first of all that yeah. There is a time in which we have to leave, okay? Even though we don't know when we have to leave, and it's because we don't know when it is time for us to go, 
it is even more important that we make use of the time that we have now to be able to like establish a more meaningful life okay ideally yeah to become a Buddha <laughs> okay ideally okay that's the ideal case and right, finally cherish every affinity okay yeah okay cherish affinity that we have today the fact that we all can hit, sit here together in fact uh, the Toli teacher has said, mentioned in class that, you know, to the class members score, the fact that all of you are here together is because of what? Karmic affinity. The fact that it is because of count who knows how many lifetimes ago or how many different lifetimes each of you have encountered yourself or become, become influenced or and accepted this teachings of the, the teachings of masters or buddhas or whatever and that therefore you had a i guess you could say a interest an interest in wanting to cultivate cultivate yourselves to become to become to know more about what is become means to be a buddha so that is all the affinity so the fact that we can sit here together in this classroom today is because we have probably some affinity in the past okay Right. Now, of course, if I hadn't come from Cal come back from California, then I wouldn't be standing here, and we wouldn't have this affinity. <laughs> but the fact that, I, but uh, but the fact that I'm here implies that we do have this affinity. And why is this affinity so important? Because of the fact that it means that, and be, why is it important in this particular circumstance? It's because of the fact that what we all want, we all want to cultivate. That is the reason why we're here, right? If you don't want to cultivate, you'll probably be somewhere in the beach today, you know, because it's going to be 98 today and it's 80 something degrees at the beach, you know. So, no, that's what I heard on the radio podcast. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. So, so the point is that because we have an interest in being a Buddha, I guess, or becoming enlightened, mainly to cultivate, then we're here together. And why being together is important is because of the fact that. Being together means that what? We can talk to each other. We can learn from each other. That's the most important part. We can learn. Yeah, you can, you can say, right. So support each other, you know, help each other, and teach each other. Okay. Because as I mentioned, each of us has different karmic affinities. So your foundations, or our foundations, if you will, are different. Some have very strong foundations others are just beginning to build their own or whatever and so in that sense we can learn from each other okay and by learning from each other it can help us what transform one's faith and destiny transform our own faith and destiny because as i mentioned our karmic past influences our destiny okay like i said it's possible that maybe not even in this lifetime we will not become a Buddha. It's possible. For some, they will become Buddha. They, be, they will achieve this attainment or this Buddhahood. For others, maybe not yet. Not, not yet. Maybe not yet. Okay. Even though we say today, okay, the fact that you receive this one point transmission guarantees what? What does that guarantee? Just by receiving this transmission. <coughs> Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. The, tr the, the guarantee is this. And this, is, this aspect is guaranteed. That regardless of your st stage of cultivation, the, the, the stage of cultivation that you're in, when it is time for you to leave, because you have received this one point transmission in this lifetime, you are guaranteed that for the next. 10,800 years, human, uh, earth years, that is, okay, mm -hmm. earth years, that you do not have to, what? You are, you are not reincarnated as a person, human, animal, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? However, because, remember, this guarantee is irrespective of your cultivation, irrespective of how good your foundation is, okay? You're guaranteed that, okay? But that just means that based upon your own foundation, your own cultivation, your own elimination of your bad habits or temperament or whatever, okay, after the 10,800 years, which is a long time, I admit, 10,800 10, years, guess what? 
that would then determine whether you continue to still stay not in this world or whether you have to come back into this world okay now that's a hard pill to swallow because we we hear the fact that oh wait if you receive that you can transcend life and death right trans we, we say that Tao Sen Liao okay yeah but that's assuming you you you, you can permanently be in uh, in quote unquote heaven I'll call it heaven for now if you truly can achieve Buddhahood okay because in, and I'll explain that a little later okay but if you haven't achieved Buddhahood yeah you can still go there because you receive this transmission but that has a like our lifespans that has a time limit also okay and that's based on your own cultivation that's why that all the Buddhas and Saints when they come what do they what is the because if you if you listen to I mean I, I admit I've, I've heard many okay if you really listen to all those what the Buddha say there's only one theme that runs through all of them it's the same theme that runs through all day cultivate 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 <laughs> that's the only because that's when I hear what the Buddha say you know regardless of what they talk about you know hang on, I just hear really the words cultivate 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 because only through cultivation can you what transform yourself okay transform yourself and by transforming yourself you transform your also your destiny okay because you now influence or make begin to alter the influences of your karmic past sure I have my karmic past we all do good or bad I don't know how much of a good foundation we have I don't know but the point is that we still have our influences in the past okay and if we can truly get rid of all that or yeah I'll call it get rid of it for now get rid of all that stuff and just concentrate and focus on our building arts foundation which is cultivation then you truly can I don't want to say eliminate your past car, past karma but rather uh, alter the influences of those karmic pasts so that it has it doesn't affect you as much as it would have without this cultivation okay so maybe that's a better way of putting it so one's faith and destiny can change okay so if you look at yourself today your present condition okay unfortunately I can only say that yeah it's because of your karmic past and like I said I, I had a hard time swallowing that pill <laughs> when that was said it's in fact it's all due according to the Buddha it's all due to your karmic past nothing else nothing else nobody no heaven or hell or no a God or uh, a devil did not influence you in any way or affect it in any way it's all due to yourself and like I said that was a hard pill to swallow and I'm still trying to figure <laughs> figure it out completely but the point is that it's all that's what that's what everything is you're doing so to speak okay your condition now it's complicated really it's, it's, I think I'm, I'm, I'm saying it like it's so easy but really it's a little bit more, more a lot more complicated than that but anyway so because of that and the fact that we have this affinity wanting to cultivate then by focusing or concentrating on our cultivation okay you can truly change your future now the problem is this though we have an expect as humans we have an expectation yeah I would like to make at least if I'm gonna change my future I would like to change it in my this present future you know not next life future or whatever right because we're talking about this life now present life okay and the answer is yeah you it will it can change your future it's just the fact that even though it, it can change we ourselves have to be careful not to have an expectation of certain changes okay because that's where later on the when uh, the, uh, the, the, the the God's instruction talks about have and have not later on but the idea is the fact that yes we desire a, a, a change in our destiny based on our evaluation of our own current situation but 
in the reality is is that the device I, I shouldn't say the reality the device that the Buddha says is that the transformation of your destiny is just a consequence of your con it's just nothing more than a consequence of your cultivation so in other words don't focus on what you want to change or what you or how you want to change it rather instead focus on just your cultivation because what comes will come will come okay how how your how your future changes or whatever it'll just be as it is okay don't be concerned about that don't don't try to focus on that focus rather on your cultivation right now yes it's almost like saying you have to get your goals straight your goals straight, straight. yeah you don't want to just like oh i want to be rich i want to be uh, um Result of by doing certain things. Yeah. We want to achieve that Buddha goal. Right. That's yeah. Goal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you you can say that. Right. Because if you are thinking about changing your destiny right now in terms of oh, okay how it affects your human life now, okay. Yes, that is what Jill meant, talks about. Okay. Your goal actually, well, yeah. I like to say I like to say that from my perspective. Okay. Even the aspect of a goal. <laughs> It's sort of like a desire or whatever, okay. Rather, instead of having a goal, I sort of like look at it more as like, don't worry about the goal. Just rather concentrate on your next step that you're going to take. Just focus on the next step that you're going to take. And then after that, focus on the next step that you're going to take. But I mean, by that I mean the journey of, of cultivation, not yeah. <laughs> just walking. <laughs> okay. you, yeah. you still need to know where you're going. Yes, yeah, sure. That's, mm -hmm. that's where your lean in mm -hmm. comes into play. Or lean in is our, like our, you could say goal, okay? It, it's because I guess you can say, you know, sometimes we want to say that, yeah, we want to have a goal, uh, a goal like being a Buddha. Another another cup, <laughs> second cup, part two. Okay, okay. To have a goal because it helps you maintain a sense of direction. Okay, your sense of direction. Okay. I think what you were trying to say is we already have our goal set, but then what for the next is we focus on our efforts. Yeah, yeah. You can you you can say you can say that you have a goal set. Yeah, yeah. But it's just that the way I see it is just that it's not. I don't see becoming a Buddha as a goal, okay? okay? I see it more as the fact that, just understand the fact that you have a, what, uh, what, uh, what the, 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 the Holy Teacher and Buddha said, that you have a Buddha nature, okay? Now, yeah, you can say, okay, the goal is to become Buddha because you have a Buddha nature, okay? I see it more as the fact that it says, you, you do what you do because I want to say because that's what you should do but I can't I, I can't I'm not confident enough to say that oh that's definitely what I hold on to that's what definitely I believe okay rather more to say that I do what I want to do because because we think about it okay think about think about this okay what does you know you you hear the term Tang Xia Tang Xia in Chinese means at the moment, at the moment. Okay, in other words, when they say when you become enlightened to the point where you know, you're like a living Buddha, every, every, whatever you do say is all Tang Xia at the moment. There's no planning involved, there's no analysis involved, there's no evaluation of the situation involved before you perform a, a, perform a reply or perform an action. Okay, that's what Tang Xia means. Okay, so in the Buddhist, uh, in the in, in Buddhism, Tang Xia is achieved when you have become enlightened. <laughs> Tang Xia, you achieve because everything for you is Tang Xia. There's no need to evaluate whatever plan, plan or uh, analyze or whatever. Okay, so when I think about Tang Xia, okay, when I think about what does it mean to be a Buddha, okay. If you think about it carefully, and okay, you think about it long enough, okay. Remember, we also talk about the fact that okay, yeah, 
why why do we want to become a Buddha? It's because of what? Well, yeah, you can say we were one, okay. You can say, okay, yeah, I was one, you know, why can't I be whatever it is again? But rather what? Because we see what? We, we as humans, feel the what? The influences of this world, this, what Buddhists call the suffering. Because Buddha calls the world is suffering, right? That's one of the four, you know, eight, uh, the four noble truths. Right? What's the first noble truth? Dukkha. Suffering, dukkha. First one, number one. Okay, and why is it suffering? Because what? We don't know you're a Buddha, number one, okay? And instead, you see yourself as a person, human, okay? And be, therefore, you're influenced by whatever. Because if you think about it, if Buddha talks about suffering, right? Now, he was on this world. He lived and walked on this world. He's like you and me, okay? If it's a suffering, why was he, why was he here? Why was he there? People say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know he's here because he wanted to teach the world about the suffering, blah, 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 because he already has each enlightenment, okay? So, now, if you were to ask him, mm -hmm. as a human person, if you, if you would have the ability to ask him, you would say, do you feel suffering now? Because you're a person right now, right? You're a person, a human person. Do you feel suffering now? What do you think he will say? What do you think he will say? Yes? No? Yes. Maybe? You think yes? <laughs> right. Well, it's actually yes and no. <laughs> it's neither, actually. Neither yes and no. The reason why is this. If you think carefully about it, when you achieve the state of Buddhahood, okay, the concept of heaven, hell, earth, all three are the same. Because for you, it is nothing but an, what, an experience that you're having. Because everything is down shaft. Everything is at the moment. You don't see it as suffering, nor do you see it as joyous. You see it as is only. Whether it's heaven or hell. Because you are, if you reach that true enlightenment. So therefore, you know, we say, oh, we want to go to heaven, we want to go to heaven. Yes. We want to go to heaven. I thought we were supposed to start at, stop at 11.30, no? I think in early, 10 minutes early. Oh, they always did, oh, okay. No, they did. Okay, but is our is, is, is our class up to 11.30? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, good. So, yeah, three minutes. Minute. Yeah, three, four. So, because when you can really achieve that state of enlightenment, I'll call it enlightenment or Buddhahood, it doesn't matter whether you're in heaven, hell, or earth. All three, it's nothing more than but the same thing. Because you are not influenced by any of it, right? That's what being a Buddha it means. Sure, you have to... If you're in heaven, okay, maybe you don't have to eat, or maybe, you know, it, it's easier in life, it's more luxurious. If you're a human, you have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to go to a bathroom, but that's all what? Just an experience you're having, nothing more. It is not a case of, oh man, I have to eat, so I suffer because I, sometimes I get hungry. No, you don't see that. Same thing if you're hell, you're suffering in this, you know, I don't know, today it's what, it's gonna reach 98? Imagine it was like 110 or 120. Okay. You would feel, oh man, so hot. It's a suffering. It doesn't influence you in that way if you can truly achieve what is enlightenment. That's why I, you know, I, I, you know it's true that we talk about, oh, okay, yeah, we need to go to heaven and all that. Yes, it is because we say all those things because it is from our human perspective. Because we see that there's something better. We think that it's better anyway. <laughs> we think that it's better. So therefore, we think that it is a level of an existence that is that does not, I would say, have all these inconveniences or sufferings we, we call them. Okay. But if you truly reach enlightenment at Dang, at the point of where you like Dangsha, it does not matter. Whether you're here or heaven or hell, it does not matter. So that's that's the way I see it anyway. So not many people will see it the same way I admit. Okay. But anyway. Again, uh, it's, not real, it's not a little bit related to our, our four uh, lines here, but the four lines are essentially talking about the fact that we need to seize the day, you know, copy the DM, the DM or whatever, the Latin, whatever. You need to make the most of the time that you have because now the vi present is now all you have. The past is past, it's gone. Ever seen Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, Kung Fu Panda, uh, the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> the past is the past. The future is what? 
unpredicted and yeah, un unknown. And the present is what the present. That's why it's called the present. You know, it's something yeah. a gift you have. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? Okay, that's what Uge Uge says. Right? Okay. So, but the point is this: is the fact that all you have is now, nothing more. All you have is now. So the point is that if you realize the fact that hey, you're here because what you want to <laughs> cultivate, you want to learn. Okay, and eventually you want to know. You know, you want to reach a goal, as Joe says, to become a Buddha. Okay, that's fine. To become a Buddha, then, you have to cultivate a lot, right? So therefore, the fact that you're cultivating, yes, the outcome is hopefully a Buddha, Buddhahood. Okay, but the point is that all you have is now, and that think about your everyday life right now, just yesterday or whatever, doesn't matter, and think about how is it that you would have changed it if you realize the fact that, hey, this cultivation is the only thing that I should be focusing on. Sure, the idea of the fact that I still have to work, go to work, I have to get a job or work to a job to make money so I can feed myself, whatever, that's all fine. That's all, I guess you could say, all the, 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 the side things that you have to do, side things you have to do to what? To nourish your cultivation. Okay, so. I guess the four lines here, when I see it, is the fact that really is talking about understanding your present self, the fact that you have a lifespan, the fact that you have an opportunity to cultivate the Tao, and the fact that you have this affinity with all these people, okay, that you can, what, you sh or you should, <laughs> rather, from my perspective, you should do everything you can to, what, focus on that cultivation so that one day you will reach, achieve that. Now, don't worry about the fact that that one day is in this lifetime or next lifetime. That's future. Think rather that I need to cultivate now. So that's why I talk about taking one step, focusing on one step at a time. Not to worry about, mm, you know, will I become Buddha in this life or not? Okay. So anyway, that's the first four stanzas of uh, the sutra and I hope that uh, you know we can it, I think it's good to really read it over and over I read it over many times and each time I read it I, I sort of like got a little bit better understanding of it and so therefore um, I hope that if you can review over it and think about it very deeply about what it's talking about and I think that can really help you to focus more on your cultivation. So for now, uh, class is uh, ended, so I'll, I'll, this is part one. I'll continue on the, the next four stanzas, hopefully, you know, in the next <laughs> part two. Thank you very much. No one, thank you. Oh, no one, two, three, okay. Okay, break time. Oh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Yeah. <laughs> By all means. I mean, if, if there's something I misspoke or, you know, you didn't quite understand what I said, yeah, please ask. And I'll try to ex <laughs> clarify it. I forgot. It's the ignorance that leads to all of, you know, that we, we will have to re agree. Right. And I've we got have to resume to it. And this kind of, you know, lead, you know, one step uh, after another to the suffering or to the, um, the conditions that we are, the unpleasant conditions that we sometimes have to face. So well, one of the things that just uh, we do on the eightfold path is, you know, that we do the issue of eradicating suffering is that we seek to improve. We, we seek to, you know, uplift. We, we seek to, to elevate. And, and that, that includes a, a conscious understanding as far as our role and responsibility. So, you know, the real issue is, you know, who's responsible and who's more as far as dealing with some of the problems that we have in the I mean, well, racism is a very ugly thing, okay? And it was something that was planned a long time ago. Well, regardless, the point is that when you're talking about improvement, you're really only talking about the improving the human condition. Yeah. You're not talking about improving to the condition of becoming a Buddha, okay? So therefore, when you look at it, that perspective, again, it's a different perspective, a very narrow perspective, a narrow perspective versus a eternal perspective. Buddhists are not concerned about improving your, what, human condition. Why? 
Why would you say? Why would I say that? Because what? You're gonna have the condition again, and you're gonna have it again, and again, and again, and again. It's gonna repeat itself. It doesn't stop. This condition does not stop. So therefore, to try and improve this condition, yeah, from our perspective of a human lifespan or a perspective of a certain small period of time, oh yeah, it's great. But that's just one very small perspective. From a perspective of Buddha, if you become a Buddha, there is no longer those conditions. Whether the condition exists is not relevant anymore. It's no longer relevant. So therefore, which is more, if you will, eternal? Which is more permanent? Obviously, the Buddha perspective. So therefore, regardless of how we want to change the human condition, we are only looking at it from our human perspective. We're not looking at it from the perspective of the Buddha. So therefore, since our goal is to what? Not can be concerned about the fact that the condition will what? Repeat itself. But rather say, why even bother with this repeating condition? That is the eternal. Okay, so therefore, yeah. Today, I don't have money to buy a meal, so yeah, it would be nice if I could eat something because I'm hungry. That's true. That is the human condition, yes. Because, after all, we need, I mean, we have to survive in this human condition in order to cultivate true. But yet, at the same time, we have to understand, we have to understand the fact that our human condition is what? Influenced by what? Our what? Our past karma. So therefore, you want to change your human condition you also have to understand that there's karma. And then you can say, okay, I want to try to alter this karma. Okay, that's fine. But altering that karma, again, only talks about what? I mean, it's only viewed from a perspective of a certain perspective of this human lifespan. Because after all, what will you think about next in your next life? Okay, so that's why from a Buddhist perspective, he's saying your, this perspective is not right or wrong. It's a perspective, okay? But that's just it, okay? And yet, it only can what? Solve the situation for what? A per limited period of time, okay? And because from a Buddhist perspective, time is literally infinite. <laughs> from our perspective, it's infinite, okay? Because for them, there's no this necessarily this concept of time, okay? Then in that case, when that perspective be more, I guess you could say, more, even from our perspective, more satisfactory. <laughs> so therefore, that's why we have to, try, we lear, since we're learning to become a, we, we learn to cultivate, to try to become a Buddha, then it is important for us to also look at things from a Buddhist perspective. Because if you do not look at it that way, then yes, you will be caught up in these conditions that you will arise. Yes, Jim. It's a phenomenon, they call it. Yeah, phenomenon, all right. Yeah, because, from, because as I mentioned, when you can reach a state of Buddhahood, everything it's a is. Translation, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Not real, it's a direct yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Now, from yeah, a Buddhist it, perspective. Yeah, I mean, it, so perspective or view is yeah. the most important thing, right? That's the first noble truth, is the proper view. First of the eight noble I mean, paths. Path, path, sorry, is proper view. <laughs> Views, right. So that's the proper perspective of everything right so we have the proper view it's not to say that we can't improve this physical life in this while we're living of yeah, course we, yeah. of course we could um, we, we could do that yeah. but we have to have that view the buddha's view the eternal <laughs> view of things the proper view to say well it's this is just one of many lifetimes and so do i want to continue mm -hmm. this you know in the next life i'm gonna have to start over uh you know and i might if I still have ignorant views, I'm going to suffer again. Well, Buddhists call them I ignorant right, views. It's okay. just, <laughs> not that we necessarily call it ignorant. Views, but yeah. so, you know, attachments, desires, all these things, right? That's what, so that, that's the higher level view. So that we have to have that proper view to guide us, right, to ultimately achieve nirvana, okay, achieve that state, um, to, you know, get, get rid of all these conditions. Yeah. Uh, so, 
But you know, it's not to say that, yeah, we, I mean, we, we still have this physical life. So of course, we try to improve this. Right. Life you, as well. It's not to say you, you don't try to improve the human. No, you actually, you could try. Definitely. You could do your best, absolute best, and do your own effort to try to improve this human condition. And there's nothing wrong with that, like I said. There's nothing either right or wrong. But if, you know, actually, but if we cultivate very well, right? We, we can get to our chance of being you know, successful, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, finding a job, you know, changing. Right, there, there are the 10 liberations. Right? Yeah. I mean, we can achieve some of those liberations, <laughs> yeah, right. which, 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 you know, basically means that, you know, uh, if, you know, if you know, through our sincere cultivation and, and you know, the, the performing of merits and, and virtues and all that, that, yeah, we can, you know, our needs will be satisfied in one way or another. Right. But, but I would like to inter interject an important point here. The improvements of our human condition, okay, is nothing more than a consequence of our cultivation. Mm -hmm. That's very important to understand. Yeah. It's a consequence of our, because in other words, if, you're to sh if your goal is to try to just improve the human condition without even thinking about cultivation and all that stuff, yes, it's possible you may improve it, it's possible you may not, okay? More importantly is that if you focus instead on your cultivation, focus on your cultivation only, the consequences of that effort will be the improvement or the change even of your destiny, we'll call it. That's why Buddha says, just from cultivation, you can change your destiny, okay? And whether that's an improvement or not, I don't know, it's up to <laughs> it's how every individual is, but in general, it is an improvement of your condition, okay? So therefore, instead of focusing on, oh, I need to improve this or that, okay, as a goal, rather focus, from the Buddhist perspective, rather focus on your cultivation, because all those things are just outcomes or consequences of your cultivation. It's just like saying, you know, Jill mentioned, okay, we have a goal to become a Buddha, right? And I don't see it as much as that. I used to see it like that. That's correct. Until I realized the fact that being a Buddha is nothing more than an outcome, a consequence of your cultivation. If you truly can cultivate yourself, just cultivate, just cultivate. The outcome is that, yeah, you reach a status of a Buddha. <laughs> you can, you can, you have the potential to do that. Let's put it that way. So therefore, don't worry about that. Just worry instead about taking that first step, taking the next step, taking the next step in cultivation. Because if you can truly focus on that and concentrate on that, everything else will come when it comes. Okay, and don't be concerned about, yeah, sure, in, the, in terms of the human condition, the fact that I'm hungry now, yeah, I need to eat now. I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't wait about cultivating right now. I need to, yes, you still need to get a job. So therefore, that's why we say there's also a balance here. <laughs> because we're humans. We're not Buddhas yet. We're humans. We have to do what humans do. I mean, we have no choice because you're a human by definition. So you have to do what humans do. Okay. And unfortunately, in our so the society is established in a way such that, yeah, in order for you to have, you know, buy a house, buy a car, eat, whatever, you have to work, etc. You have to do those things. Okay, unless of course you get very, your karma is so good that you, know, you win the lottery or something like that. Okay, but the point is this, it's the fact that you, there are needs that you have to fulfill as a human. By all means, go and fulfill it. But, but restrain that, require, that need to the point is that to the point that you are content with what you can get out of it. You are content. You don't try to pursue it more and more and more. Okay. You have to remain, you have to maintain a form of contentment because if you can do that, then you will have time to do your cultivation. Okay. Because if you're instead spending your time pursuing those things that you already have but you want more of it, then yes, you will have less time to cultivate. Okay, so instead of pursuing those things, rather just say, okay, yeah, I'll cultivate first. That's my priority, number one. Number two, I have to do what humans do. I have to make a living, I have to live, etc. I have to survive. Okay, because some people say, you know, because I used to think, hey, no, you being a human first, then cultivate. Okay, that seems more logical. 
because after all, if you're hungry, you can't cultivate, etc. Right? Or if you're if you're living in you know in Syria today, where you know bombs are falling all around you, it's hard to cultivate. You have to su talk about survival. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I honestly, up to a certain point in the past, I, I I thought about that's the priority. I changed my priority a little bit only to realize the fact that. You know what? Because you're willing to sacrifice many things just for your cultivation, guess what? Many of the things that you think you need or whatever is a natural outcome of your cultivation. That's what I come to what I come to realize. So yeah, I have to right now do what I have to do. I still have to go home and cook. I still have to eat, etc. I still have to pay my bills. Okay. But I still try to make sure that I focus on my cultivation first. Yeah, well, no, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Well, I was going to say, um, we all have to find that fine balance. Right. Because, like Transmitter Gene mentioned, we are still human. You have to do human things. But then at the same time, I wanted to add, even though that we're human, we have the true nature, like the Buddhas. So we can do both. Yeah. And that's why it happened. it's happening in our daily life. Uh, and the conditions change because after all, like I said, I don't have a family, etc. Jill has a family, she has to take care of kids, etc. So there's differences. Yes, that is true. Yeah. No, well, I mean, since you want to take it to the real issue is that, you know, religion is self dealing with dealing with people and, and dealing with relationship with government. But since you work, mentioned the word of dropping bombs on, on Syria, you're really dealing with the issue of how we move the double standard as far as dealing with do they have the right to kill or not. And, and that's something that is, you know, a problem with our fundamental relationships and what is the correct, you know, meaning, you know. And they, in order to end the suffering and dealing with even getting control over the war state is that really they don't have the right to drop bombs in Syria. Okay. So that, that's where we have to deal with that. The, the religion itself is basically, you know, developed by government and for government, for the people. But them themselves have to remove the double standard. Again, we have to okay. address and have a proper way to address and resolving, you know, misconception and, and, and to eliminate. The that's that's standard. fine. Again, we are talking about the human condition. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So therefore, like I said, and even Joe mentioned, yeah, there is a balance. Okay. So, do we focus on the human condition, or do we focus on the balance? Okay. So therefore, yeah, we can make debates or half debates about so many things about the human condition. Absolutely, sure. And you know what? Guess what? Tomorrow, it's going to be the same. Next day, it's going to be the same. And even if you solve this one tomorrow, the day after tomorrow is going to be the same. <laughs> so, so, so therefore, again, that's the, I guess you could say, the essence of the human condition. Things change always. Okay, and so therefore you you can try to resolve one another, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying that, oh, you shouldn't do it and all that. No, no. You can do what you can, sure. By all means, go ahead. But keep in mind, that is just a perspective of the human condition. And it is a perspective that's what? Narrow to the human condition. Okay, narrow, by ma narrow, restricted. I should say restricted, not narrow. Restricted to the human condition, okay. We're cultivating to try to become a Buddha. <laughs> okay, sure, if today all of us are here to debate about the human condition and all that stuff, yeah, let's debate it, let's talk about it, sure. But we're not here to do that. We're here to what? To cultivate, to become a Buddha. So therefore, the more we can understand that and the more we can see it from the perspective of a Buddha, then yes, many of the human condition issues becomes less and less, if you will, relevant. Okay, it's still there. It exists, sure. Why? Right? Not to say it eliminates it. No, it's still there. But guess what? It's less influential upon our own cultivation to become a Buddha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, also, the saying that Tao, if it's in the wrong hand, it's not Tao. So sometimes you, you mentioned that government sometimes take advantage of religion to try to impose or to influence or to control. That's not the proper view. That, I mean, that's not the proper principle or not the proper way to do things. And this is why we want to try.
try to um, spread it out because we are talking about the fundamental truths, the fundamental principles. If everyone really understands all of these <coughs> principles and everyone is aware of the causality or the universal law <coughs> of uh, justice, then there won't be any such crisis. Yeah, well, there, there should be the utopian goal, but one of the primary things Buddha is up with is to teach. Right? You rather deal with the issue of education, so you deal with the proper education that goes on within our religion. The teaching, I guess you could say, sure, from our standpoint, that Buddha teaches and we as humans learn. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah. You, you could say that. You, that's one way of looking at it. Okay. Of course, whether a person wishes to learn or not, it's still up to that individual. You can teach all you want. Whether I accept your teaching or not is what? And different issue, right? Would you agree that, would you say that instead, every time someone teaches, you accept it? Obviously not, exactly. Right, exactly. So therefore, even if the teaching is from a Buddha, whether you accept it or not is still what? Up to you. <laughs> you have the choice. Is Don't think the fact that, oh, okay, it's because it's a Buddha, I have to learn it, okay? No, you still have a choice to make, okay? Because after all, Buddha does not force anything upon you. All they can say is, hey, it's there. You want it? If you don't want it, okay, that's fine too. Because after all, you're just in this, you will remain in this condition, this human condition, or this material condition. Yeah, it's good that yeah, it's good that you brought it up. Okay, because when, when, when we say teaching, when the Buddha quote unquote teaches, <clears throat> the Buddha cannot give you a formula to say, okay, this is how you cultivate, you follow this formula, like you, how you make beer, the formula for beer, mm -hmm. and you'll get a great tasting, light, light feeling beer. Okay, is that if you follow this formula, you become Buddha? No, there is no formula. There is only what. You want to call it guidance, you want to call it um, hints, doesn't matter. Because there is no such thing as a formula in cultivation. Because what? Buddha even tells us, it's all based on what? Your ability to, we say in Chinese, Wu. Wu, what does that mean in Chinese, in, in translation? There's many different ways, it's very broad. Okay. But Wu essentially means to become enlightened, <laughs> if you will. Awaken. Awaken. Realization. Okay. It takes the individual to U. Then they can become a Buddha. If the individual does not U, all the teaching in the world, or in the Buddha's world, <laughs> whatever, will not make you become a Buddha. It takes yourself to U. That's the hint. In fact, Buddha in his how many years did he teach? 49, year, 49 years? He preached 49 years or whatever, right? In all his teachings, he says, even in the Diamond Sutra, he mentions what? All those teachings are what? Not teachings! <laughs> he calls it that. <laughs> you gotta call it that. Okay, I'll use the word not teaching. Because what I've taught, you know, you, whatever, is not a teaching, whatever, it's not. Because, and he's right. Because from that perspective, the teachings are just, I don't know, you, if you want to read a book, it's just black letters on white paper. Okay. It takes the individual to ooh, then to understand, to really understand. That's why what when he passed on, Buddha passed on the the man the mandate, if you will, to what Masakapai Maha Mahakasapai. Okay, yeah, Kasyaba. What all he did is what he took a flower, put it in front of his face, and he, his disciple ooh, <laughs> what that meant, and so that's why he became enlightened and became the next. He was one, the third patriarch, the second patriarch? Or second, second, first, right? First oh, first pair, first pair, because the Buddha is not considered patriarch at that time. He was just considered the Buddha. Okay, so Mahapasapyapa became the first patriarch of Buddhism, and he also acquired the mandate to what? You know, to pass it on to the next guy, whatever, okay. And it is because he, ooh, not because he figured out, oh, okay, yeah, I understand what you mean, blah, blah, this is what I should do, or I practice in a certain way, I'll get it. No. Because he, ooh, 
I can't use yeah. any other word but ooh. That's, that's the true teaching. That's that is the true, true Tao. It's a wordless teaching. Yeah. It's mm. the true wordless teaching. Yeah. It is that awakening or that you know, yeah. enlightenment. That's it. So it's not anything that the Buddha, that's why the Buddha says, you know, he didn't teach anything because <laughs> none of that is and he said really that in Diamond the, the <laughs> true, is the real truth. The real truth is that self-awakening. That's the real, that's where the real truth is. Okay, that realization. So it's not through the words. Um, you see, when you read that, weren't you like stuck to that word? Were you ungrateful? Well, I mean, it's like, of, I couldn't. Right? That's the purpose. Yeah, I mean, it's for <laughs> It's everything because you can misinterpret what it means. It's misleading, as far as dealing with it. And it's not just the word, it's a statement that you Right, can make. exactly. Anything okay. that's um, is black and white on paper can be. Misinterpreted. Yeah, that's, that's a misleading statement. Yeah, I, I like to give you a statement that I believe Fletcher Kai's teacher in college mentioned when he was taking a course on literature or something like that. He goes, um, you know, we, we, we get a book and it has an author and he writes whatever. And you can say, ah, how can you write like that? You know, whatever. We, we, we can criticize or you know, whatever, right? And uh, I think that was the discussion. And then the professor at that time gave a reply. And Kai told me the reply, but I don't know the exact words anymore, so I have to paraphrase. He said that the only way you can truly understand, I mean, the only way you can truly understand his writing is to understand the mindset of the author at the time he wrote it, right? Because after all, because when he wrote it, he had a certain mindset, you know, that's why he caused him to write it. And he wrote it in a certain way. So therefore, he has his own meaning behind all those things that he wrote. So yes, from a third perspective, I buy the book now from the shelf. I'm, like, hey, I'm critical of some things he says, or, or I praise things he says. That is not really understanding what he's trying to say. Because the only way you can do that is when you, get, you understand the mindset of the author who's writing the book at that time. At that moment. At that moment. Yeah. That is only when you can truly un say you understood what he's writing about. Okay. To say, oh, I understand, yeah, no, not really. You have to understand the mindset of the author at the moment he's writing. That is the true understanding. Okay, so now that fortunately is just a statement, and it's, it's like a formula, okay? So, but the Tao, it is beyond that. Okay, there is no that. There's no that formula. Okay, so anyway, I'm sorry that I took up so much time, and uh, they already finished, and uh, unfortunately, for the next two months, I won't be here, so I can't finish my class. <laughs> so, so, so I have to ask Virginia or some, some other lecturer to help finish the translation. I'll give you my translation anyway, my translations for what I have, but you can conduct the classes. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, if I, there's anything that I said that are not correct uh, about the translations and uh, the presentation, I hope the Buddhists will forgive me, and I hope that they will correct me and guide me in the correct way. Thank you very much.